Hi, uh, good morning. Uh, welcome to the session on uh, dividend policy. Today we are discussing about the dividend policy. Now, financial instruments or uh, corporate companies pay dividend on uh, shares, but what policy the corporate must use while paying the dividend? Whether dividend is to be paid from the capital or it is to be paid from the earnings and uh, what policy we should use while paying the dividends. A dividend policy, companies pay dividend mostly annually but some companies to attract the investors at all levels who depend on regular income may pay quarterly as well, quarterly, half yearly, yearly and when a, a dividend is declared, dividend is declared, a resolution is passed before uh, the declaration, the board passes the dividend for payment and this amount will be dispersed on a particular dates which are, you know, um, mentioned in the resolution. So, dividend declaration, dividend payment. Declaration date is different from the payment date. You have different dates in a dividend payment and declaration. So, date of declaration is different. Say, for example, March 15th. March 15th, the board declares that the dividend is going to be paid to the shareholders. What amount of profit? Say, for example, $100,000 is a profit. We may declare 40% of which as dividend. So, 40,000 will be paid as dividend. It's only a declaration. This is called date of declaration. As the shares are bought and sold on daily basis, shares are sold and bought on daily basis. So we don't know who is eligible for dividend, right? In the secondary market, in the secondary market, the share is sold many number of times a day. So whom shall we pay dividend is an issue. So we need to fix one date called a cutoff date for dividend payment. Such a date is called as X dividend date. X dividend date means any shareholder who holds this share until this date is eligible for dividend. Say for example April 10th. April 10th. Whoever is holding the shares until April 10th will be eligible for getting dividend which is this 40% of the profit. And we need to maintain the record who are all, you know, eligible for dividend. Such a date is called as record, date of record, date of record. It is simply nothing updating the data of the shareholders who, who who were holding the shares until April 10th. Say for example, it may be a April 14th. Around three or four working days from X dividend date. So date of declaration, you declare dividend by reducing the profit, retain earnings and creating the dividend payment. X dividend date is only an announce announcement that Whoever is holding the share until this date will, will be eligible for dividend. Date of record, just only updation of, it is the updation of the eligible shareholders data, like their names, addresses, bank accounts, etc. to send this dividend to their bank accounts. So no accounting transactions are required, required 
for these two days. Just only in an updation of the data, right? So you don't need any accounting entries. And one day will come on which the dividend is to be paid. That is called date of payment. Date of payment. This can be May 5th. May 5th. So on this day, you need cash ready to pay to the shareholders. So only you need accounting entries on date of declaration and date of payment. Okay. On the date of payment, you will take dividend payable and cash account. On the date of declaration, you take retain earnings and dividend payable. So the companies have to maintain this data accounting entries for dividend each year. And the dividend are not to be dividends are not to be paid based on the profits of the company but they are to be paid based on the growth of the company. Growth of the company. Profits may go up and down on you know yearly basis, but based on the growth of the company, company is growing. Company is getting profits, say for example, last year 100,000. This year 250,000. Next year 450,000. Based on the profits, if you pay dividend like this, Next year it may be 320,000. So the dividend should not be paid based on this. It should be paid based in a, you need to maintain a stability. Like first year you may pay $2 dividend, $2.2, $2.3. So you should maintain some common growth, you know, not like aggressive, paying heavy amount when the company gets more profits, low amount when you get less profit. Okay. So, we need to maintain some stability while paying the dividend. We need to maintain a good policy for the payment of dividend. Also, keep in mind the investor's opportunity cost. If the investor is investing this amount outside in any bank or any other company, what amount is he expecting? On $100 of investment, he is expecting 10%, 12%. Whether we are giving him this much investing in our company or not. Otherwise, he may not be happy with our investment. He may invest in the other company. So we need to also check the return required on the capital, the opportunity cost, cost of the investor. In the dividend policy, one more important factor is that whether our company has good amount of liquidity to pay the dividend on time or not. Then uh, see that the debt repayments etc. also uh, are paid on time. So if you pay heavy dividends, the debt holders like banks etc. may question that you are distributing entire profit as dividend. Is there any amount to repay this debt or not? So we'll have to see. This one as well. <coughs> Residual theory, in case of the expansion of the business, in case of the expansion of the business, the earned profit, that is retained earnings, can be reinvested in the business. But as per the only debt structure, you have debt structure, debt and equity. Say for example, debt and equity, we have the percentages like 40%. 60% and company wants a capital an expansion of say 500,000 this amount should be raised in the same structure capital structure capital structure so this 500,000 we are going to raise by debt capital and equity capital debt capital 40% so 40% of 500,000, that is 200,000, you should raise by bank loans, bonds, etc. And 60% equity that you need to raise by share capital, 300,000. Now, 
this amount if our existing shareholders agree that yes you do one thing we have enough retained earnings instead of paying us dividend you can use this money from retained earnings so we have four hundred and fifty thousand dollars of retained earnings which can be used for the payment of dividend what is the amount four hundred and fifty thousand the existing shareholders may say that instead of you paying this 450,000 as dividend and we are interested in buying the shares back, of course we need 300,000 to, to, to buy the shares back here. So why don't you adjust this amount from here? You don't pay us cash, we don't pay you cash. So this amount will be adjusted from the retail earnings by issuing more shares and the residual amount is only 150,000. Then you need to decide that how much of this 150,000 it should be used for the distribution of dividend. This is called residual theory. Under residual theory, when a company wants to issue or wants to expand its business, the capital required for the expansion of the business should be raised in the debt capital structure ratio, debt to equity capital structure ratio. Debt of course can be raised by you know debt structure, debt amounts, but equity is to be raised with the consultation of the existing shareholders, whether they want dividend in cash and not interested in buying the shares, or they don't want to be paid in cash because they are interested in buying the shares. Most of the companies, um, shareholders like to repurchase the shares of the same company when the company is an expand, in an expansion position. So shareholders will agree for this ad adjustment. The 300,000 additional capital can be adjusted from retained earnings. And if any amount left, that will, be, that will be used for the declaration of dividend. This is the residual amount. And if you have this policy for the payment of dividend, such a policy is called as residual dividend policy. Stock dividends, stock dividends, stock splits. Uh, when you have enough retail earnings, but no cash flows, say $200,000 retail earnings. Now we want to pay dividend. Usually, most of the dividends are paid in cash to the shareholders. Cash dividend, stock dividend. Okay, cash dividend, just we will reduce the retail earnings and will reduce cash payment. Cash balance will be reduced, retail earnings will be reduced. If the company doesn't want to pay cash, the retail earnings will be utilized and a stock dividend will be paid means additional shares will be given say for example a shareholder is eligible for hundred dollars of dividend we pay him by 10 shares of ten dollars each means we will issue him ten doll ten shares whose value is ten dollars each so ten shares times ten dollars hundred dollars so instead of paying cash we further issue him shares of you know the company in the form of shares which is stock dividend so additional shares will be issued to the existing shareholders for the payment of dividend in the form of shares it is called stock dividend when a company pays stock dividend listen carefully the impact will be retained earnings will be decreased because you are utilizing the money Share capital will increase. Retain earnings, share capital, both are in the same heading. No change in the third point. No change in the equity. Because one minus, minus item, one plus item for the same amount within the heading. One plus item, one minus item within the same heading. So there is no change in equity.
number of shares will increase number of shares will increase and when number of shares increases eps will decrease so these are the changes you can see once the stock dividends are issued retail earnings will decrease share capital will increase no change in the equity number of shares will increase and eps will decrease stock splits a company with a high priced share may think that the shares are not traded the shares are not in demand with the medium and low level investors because the price is hiked like anything say for example a 10 dollars face value share in the open market it is 130 130 and a normal investor who is having low income say he wants to buy these shares he has to pay in the open market at 130 the shares were issued say five years back at 10 dollars but the market value now is 130 dollars say if he wants to buy the shares there's a condition that you should buy at least 10 shares so you need to be ready to invest $1,300 to buy the, this company shares which may be beyond his capacity. So in this case you will have less number of trades every day because it is not in capacity you will not think of the shares you will trade with other company shares which are having low price. The company realizes that the, the shares are not traded properly because of the hike in the price let us do one thing say we have at the moment 10,000 shares of $10 each but the market price in the secondary market it is traded at 130 we realize that this 130 is heavy price so some medium level investors income level investors do not like to share, trade these shares let us do one thing this one share here will become say five shares and we are splitting this share into two dollars each and one share will become five shares so five for one five for one one share will become five shares 10,000 shares will become 50,000 shares 10,000 shares will become 50,000 shares and obviously $10 will become $2 so each share will become of $2 value see if you calculate also the same 10,000 times $10 100,000 50,000 times $2 only the number of shares will increase but no change in the amount likewise market value will also be split divided by 5 so it is going to be $26 now low level in income investors you may think that yes if I, even if I buy 10 shares 10 shares times 26 it is going to be only $260 yes it is in my capacity I can trade these shares so this is the intention of the corporates to split the stocks there is no loss at all to the existing shareholders only the number will increase and the face value will decrease the impact of stock split is the number of shares will increase face value will decrease market price will also decrease thereby EPS will EPS will decrease and there is no change in the equity for your information 10,000 times $10 100,000 the same is presented as 50,000 times $2 100,000 only number of shares increased but not the amount amount remains same so equity there is no change in equity number of shares will increase EPS will decrease face value will also decrease thereby the market price will also decrease 
reverse split it is just opposite to the step split sometimes say for example a company has issued 100000 shares of 1 dollar each the total amount is 100000 dollars see this share some shareholders may think that it's nothing low priced share low priced shares i think it's a very small company i do not want to invest so new shareholders or old shareholders do not like to trade with these shares and the market price is say for example 5 dollars 5 dollars is nothing for them so they don't care about this shares at all so realizing that this company may make reverse split in the split we said 5 for 1 Remember five for one. Okay, five for one. So five shares were issued for one share. Five shares were issued. Five shares are issued for one share. That is called split. Reverse split means one for five. One. for five existing shares it can be 10 it can be 2 it can be 3 whatever but i am just giving an example one share for the existing five shares so here 10000 shares of 1 dollar each will become now 2000 shares of 5 dollars each Now you see the amount. There is no change. Nobody is going to lose money. For ten thousand shares of one dollar each, the total share capital is ten thousand dollars. Two thousand shares of five dollars each is also ten thousand. Is there any change? No existing shareholder is losing money. No, only one thing we are saying that you used to have ten shares of one dollar each. your investment in the company was 10 dollars say for example the same shareholder will have only two shares now 10 shares will become two shares but the share price will be now 5 dollars not 1 dollar so his investment in the company still is 10 dollars there's no loss to him the stuff he is saying 10 doll 10 shares he will have to say two shares that's it this is called reverse split when there is a reverse split number of shares will decrease number of shares will decrease when number of shares decrease eps will increase because denominator level is going to decrease so eps will increase no change in the equity no change in equity okay and this face value of the share will increase see from 5 dollars to 1 dollar to 5 dollars likewise market price also will increase okay so share price share price, face value and market price will increase number of shares will decrease eps will increase and no change in the equity because it's an only adjustment as far as the amount is concerned there is no change Then the next topic is stock repurchases. Uh, a company, for many reasons, may buy its own shares back. Say, for example, we had issued fifty thousand shares at the rate of say ten dollars. All the fifty thousand shareholders will enjoy the profits of the business. They get dividend. They will enjoy the growth of the business. we issued these shares 5 years back 10 years back when the company was in the need of money the company now has enough money still these 50000 shareholders will enjoy the profits profit divided by net profit divided by 50000 shareholders we feel that this 50000 shareholders are sharing the profit so the 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 profit per share is decreasing why don't we use the extra cash available with us 
to buy some of the shares back using cash so that the 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 pre people who share this profit will get reduced say we are buying 2000 shares back from this that is called treasury stock stock repurchase means company purchases its own share back so that what happens is the the number of people who are going to share the profit from next year onwards will be only 48000 net profit divided by 48000 as the denominator increases or decreases ratio will increase so profit per share will increase likewise dividend also will increase okay so eps will increase and dps will also increase dividend per share and this 2000 shares are held by the company and not eligible for any dividend until they are reissued most of the companies they buy their own shares for not issuing it back so they retain the company retains with the company itself because these 2000 shares are held by the company not eligible for any kind of dividend so the remaining shareholders will be more happy that they are getting more dividend because denominator level decreased so this is an advantage to the company by purchasing its own shares back when cash balance supports but just because of this the company cannot be so greedy to buy many shares back company may have lots of money after five or ten years of its existence and uh, uh, company can buy back 50 percent of the shares back even maybe 100 percent also this is the reason why the government will keep some cap that you cannot buy shares more than five percent more than two percent more than you know six percent like that so as per the companies act the companies buy back its own shares when there is a enough money where there is enough money to buy back the shares so the shares which are purchased back uh, company purchases its own shares back for the sake of you know the the uh, increasing the eps and dps such a stock is to be disclosed on the financial statements as a minus item from the equity this is going to be sixth item in our you know equity or presentation on the balance sheet on the balance sheet we present preference shares premium preference shares common shares common shares premium retained earnings and now the minus item is going to be treasury stock so the five items total and the sixth item minus item will become equity and treasury stock remember we can only buy the common shares back not the preference shares companies do not buy back preference shares company redeem companies redeem the preference shares what we are talking about is common shares so don't expect any treasury stock in preference shares so treasury stock means it is the purchase of our own common shares back companies do not buy or preference shares as treasury stock companies only buy common shares back because common shareholders only um, share the profits residual amount after the payment of interest or fixed dividend to the preference shareholders so treasury stock is a part of common stock 